Hello, and welcome back to the Gloomhaven Deadly Challenge. Now, this one is not going to be a solo challenge. It is going to be 2v4. So this scenario, I had four mercenaries. I just started the video right after I had my Lightning Bolt class kill itself. Uh, so my Mind Thief is just going to be invisible this whole scenario until it dies. So I decided uh, that I would let myself use level 9 characters for this. I gave a few tries with level 8 characters, and it was just really difficult. Um, when you have the monsters for four mercenaries, they just, they deal so much damage, and there are so many of them. It's, it's really, really difficult to survive all of that damage that they can output. So I decided to go with Sawbones and the Elementalist. Sawbones is just one of my favorite classes. I just love playing him. Um, he, he just does so much between wounding, AoE damage, and disarming. He's, he's just a lot of fun to play. Um. And then I needed something to pair with him, so I decided I wanted a lot of curses, since my Sawbones is always going to be up there melee. Uh, so I went with the, the Elementalist for this level 9 card that I'm using right here, where it targets everything within 3 range, and then you just need light and dark, and it will curse and muddle them. So I just put 5 curses into their deck, which is very nice, and then they're also all muddled. So for my Elementalist build, uh, I'm not going super heavy on the elements. I didn't take Simulacrum, which you would just consume any four elements to get a two-target attack five. Um, I'm, I mainly only am going for Darkness as my main element. So I've got Vengeance, which is Darkness and any one other element to kill... Uh, normal targets in a triangle pattern, which means I'm not really afraid of these cultists summoning, because even if they summon skeletons, I can pretty easily kill two of them instantly with vengeance. Uh, and then I have my level 9 card that I just used, so that uses lightness, light and darkness. And then the only other, uh, the only other attack I'm going for, it needs uh, leaf, fire, and ice to get a two-target stun. So I went ahead and added leaf to my generate fire card. Uh, and then on my Sawbones, I added a few enhancements. I added Disarm to Bloody Saw. Um, it's just a single target attack, so it gets the single target price. But then with Hold Back the Pain, you get to hit multiple targets. So it's a very cost-efficient enhancement to add Disarm to Bloody Saw. And then uh, I also added Strengthen to the bottom of Do No Harm. So it's a, a move, a heal, and a strengthen. Uh, and then turn one, I just used... Uh, euthanize to kill one of the cultists so that I wouldn't have to worry about them summoning super early on. And then uh, luckily I had I had stuns pulled on this turn where they drew a summon card. So only one of these three cultists is going to summon. So not too bad. Unfortunately my Sawbones is going to be heavily cursed throughout this whole run uh, just because he is all of these cultists curse with every attack. So he's going to be eating a lot of curses. But this is the turn I was talking about. I added Leaf to the bottom of Stoking Hail, so that if I pair that with Crystallizing Blast, it will always set the three elements that I want, Fire, Leaf, and Ice. So now on my following turn, I will be able to do a two-target stun. And so we're just going into a new turn. Uh, the main thing that I really love about Sawbones is just that every enemy is basically always wounded. And I don't know why, I just, I really love wounding. Uh, it's just, it's one of my favorite mechanics. Unfortunately, in this scenario, cultists steal a lot of healing, and then in the final room, um, they just always heal. Now, I would have preferred if this skeleton had moved forward and attacked on this turn. Uh, I mean, maybe not, because he might have just killed my Sawbones. Um, well, no, because he can't go, he can't move and attack at faster than 15, so I would have been able to heal myself first. Um, it would have been nice if he had been close just so that I could go for a hold back the pain and hit everything around me, but that didn't end up happening. So I just went for the kill on the wolf there, uh, because I know that my elementalist is going to be stunning two targets with the shaping the ether, I believe the card is called. And so I'm not worried about what these cultists are doing on the following turn. I also got kind of lucky that they pulled their 10 speed card here. Um, it did mean that they were faster than my Sawbones, and so they were able to damage him a little bit. But the 10 speed card is where they move attack and they set up their attack on death. So I know that I'm not going to be killing them this turn because <laughs> Elementalist is almost always just drawing plus zeros like he just did right there. Um, but now they're both stunned for the following turn, so I don't have to worry about them at all. They won't be cursing me. They won't be summoning. Um, 
and then they did end up drawing their summon card. So that timing worked out very well for me. Uh, I wish I had used my boots. I have them available, I just didn't notice. Um, I could have used my boots to go slower than that skeleton, and then my hold back the pain would have also hit him. Uh, so that was definitely a misplay there. I just was going a little bit too fast. And then I get crit for my <laughs> for my mistake there. Luckily, though, Skeleton drew a very low damage card, so don't really have to worry about that much. And then I don't have my elements up here for Vengeance to be a kill, but I, I'm not worried about killing this one Skeleton. He's just one guy, so he's, he's not really a big threat. So I decided to go for just the damage and see if I can get any elements up, which I did. So just get a little bit more damage in from my sawbones here, and I don't really need to. I don't really need to long rest on the elementalist here. The only item he would get back would be the telescopic lens, which would be good, but it's really just not necessary. Uh, I want this cultist dead because he is summoning this turn. Oh well, never mind. I guess I didn't target him. I would have drawn a curse either way, even with advantage though, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> able to give a uh, give a med pack over to the elementalist I, I don't even I don't know if I really like surgeon satchel as a card it's it sounds really good in theory like it's basically a move for heal for and then if the ally plays correctly it's a uh, it's an extra turn for them so I mean it sounds pretty good but Overall, I just have it in this build because I, I need some move cards. The only move cards I have are Do No Harm, Surgeon Satchel, and um, Hamstring. But then with Hamstring, you're immobilizing yourself, so you, you can't always use it. It's very situational whether you want to or not. So once again, on that previous turn, I had a stun queued up right for when the cultist decided to summon. And unfortunately here, he gets his on-death attack, but... My Elementalist has thrown enough curses in the deck that it doesn't really even matter. So, very, very nice to have that for me. And then the Muddle helps there, blocking some damage from that Skeleton. So, I decide to lose Surgeon Satchel here. It is a good move card, but I don't particularly need it. I'm excited for when the DLC comes out and we get the solo items for the new characters, or the new solo items for the Mercenaries. And I don't know... I'm... I'm having a tough time deciding whether I want that or a blinking cape on my Sawbones. Because the idea of Surgeon Satchel being a move for heal 8 is really, really solid. Handing out two med packs with a single card is really good. But I love blinking cape. Blinking cape is just my favorite item on him because you can go for a nice hold back the pain and hit hit a bunch of targets with it since you get a, a move without having to play a move card. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure which one of those I'm going to do, but I'll probably do some testing with both of them. So I'm, I made a bit of a mistake here. I forgot I had my invisibility cloak. I probably should have just walked into the room rather than running backwards with my boots. Uh, and I knew everything was going to come forward. I didn't quite realize that these living spirits were going to be attacking my, my poor sawbones from so far away. But luckily, one of them drew a curse, so they didn't deal too much. But it probably would have been best if I had had moved my moved my elementalist into the room to go invisible that way he would be in the middle of everything um so i went ahead and blinking caped here i figured i wanted to get up in on these living or on these um cultists and then unfortunately they do summon on this very first turn that i see them i do get a stun on one which is really nice and then that refresh item card is just always my favorite thing to see um and there are, there are a couple good options here, but basically I think if the star earring has been used, it's it's pretty much always the best choice. Uh, a heal three, getting two cards back, and refreshing my shields is so, so, so good. Uh, and so I messed up here. I forgot to discard my uh, hold back the pain, so I can't get it back because I still have it in my act area right now so i had to pick two other cards but then i do have my singular uh or i had another stamina potion that i was able to get my hold back the pain back with so very lucky here drawing some of those curses but that's exactly why i brought the elementalist uh was just for those curses and then that living spirit 
heals himself on the same turn that I that I wounded him. So that's very annoying. So I go for another wound here, and this time I'll hit that skeleton that was just summoned. There's that 10 speed card again with those jerks hitting me. Uh, but I used my mana potion during my long rest so that I would have everything set up for a nice big eternal equilibrium. And then I go ahead and use my power potions here because I figure this is the most targets I'll ever, ever hit. That's what, seven targets? That's, that's a pretty good attack. Seven targets with uh, attack seven. And so I was able to get a little bit of damage into these living spirits. It's unfortunate that I had to be melee and that meant disadvantage. But also, the elementalist deck has so many zeros in it that disadvantage, you know, it's not it's not normally going to be all too bad. I did draw a miss on one of those elite living spirits, but not the end of the world. Definitely big damage from the elementalist there. And then adding seven curses, that's just, that is a bonkers card. Absolutely crazy. And then a nice big AoE attack here on my Sawbones. So able to take out both of the uh, both of the normal living spirits there. That's a very good turn. And then these guys are muddled from my attack. So get one of the curses out. Now these cultists are nice and low, which is pretty good here. So I decided that I wanted to focus my efforts on killing these living spirits. So I go fast with my sawbones here. Use my boots to underspeed that uh, that skeleton. I wanted. I wanted the enemies to walk up to me. So I knew with Grizzly Trauma I would be muddling these living spirits, meaning they wouldn't move away from me. And then I just needed the cultist and the skeleton to walk towards me to get totally surrounded again for another nice hold back the pain. And so that ends up happening. Unfortunately, these cultists do heal themselves, so they're no longer wounded. Uh, but I went ahead and <laughs> stamina potioned back Eternal Equilibrium. And on the previous turn, I had used my... Uh, my 15 speed card that sets light and dark just so that I would have eternal equilibrium ready to go again. So I don't think I really got any damage in there. Um, since I didn't have my power potions, I wasn't really able to eat through those shields, but I did get more curses. So these guys are fully cursed up and I'm just going to step away so that my sawbones will take aggro over my elementalist. So wounds on these living spirits are nice. Ooh very nice curse drawn there but they did have 10 curses and he was muddled so relatively what is, i think that's like a 60 percent chance 66 uh, and then even better for any other cards they had already drawn so here i go for just some stuns since i didn't have hold back the pain and i didn't have any stamina potions to get it back unfortunately um, but a stun with syringe is always nice just make sure that that living spirit won't damage and then I just needed some good damage on this one which I did get so I was able to get a kill there so no big damage from either of those living spirits and another nice curse drawn there unfortunately he still curses me but this is definitely the nice part of Winter's Edge it, I, it would have been much better had I drawn my cold card on the previous turn and I could have gotten my, my big pierce on Winter's Edge on that attack but even without getting that pierce it's still an attack 5 with without having to use any elements to make it an attack 5. It's just 2 range, but you can position yourself so that 2 range is enough. So, even without the pierce, I was still able to get good damage onto that living spirit since he's poisoned. And then he's also wounded, and he was stunned on that turn. So, I just need one more turn of him not healing himself, and he will die. And then he wasn't even drawing an attack this turn, so I think I... Uh, I shouldn't have targeted him. I should have targeted the... Oh, well, the skeleton's going to die to the wound anyway. So really, the only enemy I need to hit here is that cultist. And then I actually got some plus damage on the on the living spirit right there. So he, he does just die. <laughs> nice crit on a one damage attack. And then all three of these enemies just have one health. So they will all die to their wounds. Ooh, but a very nice rolling heal three there. That's basically the best thing I could have drawn. Um, rolling three and a curse actually is fantastic luck. Just getting the curse out and getting the heal. So just time to move forward towards this last room. I didn't ever um, use my elementalist to turn the sawbones invisible in this scenario. Um, in the last one I was trying, that was that was something that I was needing to do to survive. But in this one, it kind of just worked out that um, all of the enemies are melee, so that. That makes it a lot easier for the Sawbones. 
uh, just dealing with melee enemies. So going into this final room here, I haven't played this scenario in like six months. So I honestly, I had no idea what <laughs> I was going to be dealing with in here. And I definitely misplayed here. I should have used my boots. I kind of just assumed that with telescopic lens, I would be in range to hit everything at least a little bit and just see what element cards I draw. Uh, but I should have used my boots to take one step further so that I actually hit the ones in the back. I didn't realize I wouldn't hit them. Um, but I saw that they had drawn their heal card, so I wasn't afraid. I knew I could move in and not take damage. And now here, I don't understand. The game should have been showing me this hex right here when I was selecting, but it, it wasn't. I don't, I don't know why it does that. It does that sometimes, and it just, it just doesn't see hexes that you can legally walk onto. And so sometimes monsters just do nothing when they should be, um, when they should be moving towards you. And so same thing right there. I should have been able to move on that hex without walking closer first. But I just made sure that I was surrounded by cultists, and I went slow so that uh, if, as long as they didn't draw their summon card, the cultists would surround me for another nice hold back the pain. Figure I might as well go for my volatile bomb here. I was, I planned to use the volatile bomb as a stun, um, but getting five extra damage is pretty nice on these cultists. I do have the top of grizzly trauma, which I actually haven't used yet in this scenario. I've just used it for the bottom to spread a bunch of poisons and wounds. Uh, but the top of Grizzly Trauma, as long as the target is missing 10 or more health, it will just die. And it's a triangle shape, so I can, with the way these cultists are grouped right now, I just need two of them next to each other to be at 15 health or lower, and they will die in one shot to that Grizzly Trauma. So I learned from my mistake. I made sure to discard my hold back the pain here. And then uh, these cultists are actually faster than me here, which is fantastic since they're all disarmed. But unfortunately, they're close enough to the altar in the middle here that they are healing at the beginning of all of their turns. So wounds basically deal nothing. This guy over on the left, he definitely should have healed. I don't know why he didn't. He is within two range of the altar, but that is just the game being weird. But now all of these enemies are below... Um, they're all elites, so I can't one-shot anything with Vengeance. I don't think I ever even used the broken part of Vengeance in this scenario. Um, but all of these guys are elites, so I can't one-shot them. But they are all missing 10 or more health, which means Grizzly Trauma is ready to kill anything. That's one thing that just makes the Sawbones so powerful. He has so many kill cards. But I think his are more balanced than some of the other kill cards in the game. Um, things like you have to have two negative conditions, or they have to be missing 10 health, or you have to uh, immobilize and disarm yourself. At least his kill cards, they have consequences to using them. So I could have targeted either of the cultists here for the poison and wound, but I decided to go for the one that's low. Um, they're both disarmed, so it doesn't matter. So I do end up getting a kill with my one damage attack, which is nice. And just one more cultist left until they finish the sacrificial ceremony, whatever it is they're doing, and... Uh, and then some flame demons will be coming. I knew, I remembered when I was playing this that there was something that happened when you killed all the enemies, but I did not remember what it was. Um, so at this point, I, I, I had no idea if I was close to winning or if it was going to be summoning a lot of enemies that were very difficult to deal with. Uh, but I have a ton of stamina left on my Sawbones, so I'm really not concerned. Um, and I'm definitely not a good elementalist player. It's one of the classes that I I was really excited for in the beginning, and then I was really disappointed with once I started playing him. And so I kind of rage quit the elementalist. Uh, but his, his level 9 card is really good. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun to use. So now all of my characters are going to take 2 damage at the beginning of all their turns. Uh, and then these flame demons have ridiculous retaliate, ridiculous range. Uh, but... With my uh, telescopic lens adding two range, I'm just barely able to get out of range um, using my boots. I can get out of range to where I can hit both of these skeletons and they can't hit me. So just get a little bit of potential damage. I need a plus two to deal any damage. <laughs> oh no, I guess with this, I just need a, a, a plus one to deal any damage on these guys. And I do manage to get one of them. It would have been a nice time to crit, but... Oh well. I think the only time I crit in this whole scenario was when my Sawbones didn't attack for one. So not the most efficient. 
Uh, so I will be do no harming, wanting do doing no harm to one of these. Uh, one of these flame demons. I just decided to go for the bottom of Grizzly Trauma first to get a wound on the other one. And then, luckily, they walked up nice and close to me. So, able to just go for some damage here. But I've got the poison, so that makes me get some nice good damage with my plus two. And now I can do no harm on the one who's full health, and then the other guy will be dying. Luckily, the altar isn't healing the wound off of them anymore. Uh, so I don't need to worry about that at all. And they get a really slow card here, so I am going for some damage with Winter's Edge. And once again, I don't have the elements that would give me Pierce on this attack, but I don't really need them because it is an attack for five. So that plus one is super nice. It, it makes it so that this Flame Demon is going to die to his wound, and I will do no harm the other one, and... <laughs> And that is it. This scenario has been won. So that is going to be all for this one. I'm definitely going to have a bunch more of these 2v4s coming. I don't know which scenario I'm going to tackle next, but it will be a fun one. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and come on back. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.